Of course, the Cincinnati Zoo is famous for our animals, but we also have a very wide variety of programs, education programs, programs for our general visitors, and it takes a lot of people to do those. And I'm here with Melinda Voss from the Zoo's Education Program, and you're starting a new thing, not really new, but it's gotten bigger, called AmeriCorps here at the zoo, right? That's right. We welcomed AmeriCorps at the Cincinnati Zoo about a week ago. We have 14 service members serving so for great. a full year. Collectively, those 14 people are going to serve 18,000 hours in one year, helping the zoo fulfill its mission, but most importantly, really helping economically disadvantaged students from our greater Cincinnati yeah. region to get some really quality science education. And of course, they have fun at the zoo to yeah. meet some animals, build good relationships with their teachers, help those teachers to perform in the classrooms. We're gonna accomplish a lot with their help. Oh, it's a neat thing. If you're not familiar with AmeriCorps, sometimes it's called the Domestic Peace Corps. So it gives people a chance, often young people, to provide some service to their community and also learn a lot of new skills. And some folks in the past who we've had from AmeriCorps have gone on to working either at the zoo or others, right? That's right. We have, working at the zoo currently, nine people who've served in AmeriCorps, including me. There you go. I did it during college, and I know beyond doubt that I wouldn't be here at the zoo today if it weren't for that experience I had. Um, environmental education didn't register with me as a young college student. I didn't really consider that as a career opportunity mm -hmm. until I spent time mm -hmm. working on summer camps at places like the Imago Urban Nature Center or the Cincinnati Nature Center. So my service meant a lot to me. I grew in confidence and leadership, but also really had an opportunity to see what others faced or what other challenges were like outside of my own small world. And that's what we really want for our members serving here is to grow in all kinds of different ways. So it's very great personal development for them, but they're giving back in a huge way. With our AmeriCorps program, our goal is to serve 11,000 students in the region um, directly by bringing them here to the zoo through overnight programs or daytime school programs but then we also want to serve their teachers and these are all in schools that we've identified as economically disadvantaged so students that really wouldn't otherwise be getting opportunities like this we're targeting them and we're going to build lasting relationships with those teachers so that beyond just this year we have an impact on what's happening in the classroom we're really going after improving scientific literacy with those students and teachers and also just attitude. We want kids to be excited about learning and excited about nature and wildlife. Yeah. So those, those are our big goals, is to support students in lasting ways, especially by benefiting those teachers. We want to provide them with really great professional development opportunities, all of which wouldn't be possible without the AmeriCorps members. Yeah, it's <laughs> neat. I've met with our new group and they're just terrific, 14 young people. They happen to all be young women. Yep. And they're already involved, both here at the zoo and out in the community. If you're interested in supporting some of these programs, the zoo has a neat thing called the Living Classroom Access Fund. And that helps subsidize schools that wouldn't be able to come otherwise. That can help them get here, provide buses, etc. Sometimes it even helps kids spend the night. We have an overnight program called Nocturnal Adventures. And these might be kids who've never done anything like that before. So between AmeriCorps and that, we're getting it done. Melinda, thanks for doing it. Thank you, Thane. Yeah.